welcome everybody. Um, I'm Shana Gubacha. I'm the director of the Immigration History Research Center at the University of Minnesota. We're one of the co-sponsors of, of the conference. And the panel this morning is called Shaco, Minnesota Somali Youth Tell Their Stories. Shaco is a project of the University of Minnesota um, students, uh, an initiative actually, their idea. They came up with it. They wanted to do it. And they're going to be presenting some of their preliminary results to you today. Shaco means stories in Somali. And we felt, they felt, that it would be important to create a document of young people's perspective on what it means to come to the United States to adjust to your way of life and to leave those stories in the form of a documentary video archive for their own children and grandchildren and the Somali American community of the future, but also for researchers who rarely have access to the stories and the voices of young people in quite this way. So I'm really excited about it because the Immigration History Research Center manages archives of materials on immigrant and refugee life. And this one is almost unique in being focused on young people's lives. So I'm going to introduce you quickly to the members of the panel, and then they're going to show you what they've been doing to uh, both record and to preserve and eventually to give access to the stories that Somali young people are telling about their lives um, in Somalia, the journey that brought them here in the United States. So uh, to my far right, to your left, is Saida Hassan. Saida is a senior now. Um, she came to at the University of Minnesota. She came to the United States when she was 12 years old. And she has been studying education at the U of M. She'll be graduating in May. Where are you, Saida? And she's interested in multicultural education and hoping to pursue next year a master's degree in multicultural college teaching and learning at the, at the U of M. Uh, seated next to Saida is um, Mustafa Jumali, who, who had the idea for this project and then recruited friends and colleagues to help him. Mustafa was born in Mogadishu, Somalia, uh, has lived now in the United States for 20 years, and you can probably believe this, he came here when he was about a year old, or maximum two years old. So the majority of his life, He's actually lived here in Minnesota. Like say that he's a senior at the U of M in the Twin Cities. He studies African American and African Studies and Sociology. He's interested in studying more. He's interested in Somali social history and comparative race yeah. and immigration studies. And two of his life goals are to work with Somali refugees and to become a professor of African Studies. High goals, which he obviously hopes we will achieve. Mohammed, come on up here. Who is our video man who's coming up uh, to the front now is a junior at the U of M. And he's studying scientific and technical communication and information technology and design. And he uh, has a minor in computer science. He loves social media and net, uh, networking. He works to promote it. He's a web designer. He's an active blogger. And maybe before this session is over, he'll show you or point you towards some of his media work on the web uh, in the way that Saida and uh, Mustafa and a, thir a third member of the team, uh, Fartoon Abdi, who couldn't be here today, were instrumental in getting the video and the interviewing going. Um, uh, Mohammed has played a particularly important role in making sure that those videos are in the archive and on the web and accessible to everyone who's interested in hearing these stories. So I'm not sure whose order you're presenting in, but please join me.
here in St. Cloud, as we speak, and a lot of them actually, last um, summer, a lot of new immigrants arrived. There's more to come this summer from what I've been hearing from the news and things like that. Um, a lot of them are placed in Australia, London, and the Minnesota is actually one of the largest Somali camps um, in America, or in the Western world. So <coughs> Riverside is, I don't know if you can see that picture very well, it's, in, it's on the side of West Bank, the University of Minnesota's West Bank, and it's rises, towers, and a lot of Somalis actually live there. But um, a lot of them settled there, and they, from the 1990s, some still live there, some, some new immigrants come there. So if you were to visit this place right now, and you start walking down there, um, you would see a lot of mosques within the distance, or um, you would see a lot of uh, malls, cultural malls where they get their clothing. You know, things that meet their cultural needs are there. Um, and the University of Minnesota plays a big role in this community because they're so interconnected with each other. Um, you might want to ask, a lot of people ask themselves why Minnesota, why did the Somalis come to Minnesota, why any immigrants come to Minnesota? One thing that from the research that I have been doing on the things that I have known is that chain migration was one reason. Um, so one family is here to kind of kind of get support from each other. Another family would come down here if they were in San Diego or Columbus or Tennessee. A lot of them actually, when they came from the refugee camps, were um, put in different states. But for support reasons, they would call each other and they would say, hey, this state is better. And then another thing that Minnesota is known for is public service. There is um, a lot of them, a lot of the refugees, they were sponsored by Catholic churches, by NGOs, and things like that. And um, they're very known for that, and they're very welcoming um, state, that's what's known. And then another thing was that the job opportunities that Minnesota had. It had a lot of jobs, and it had training at that time, back in the 90s. Um, so, let's
And in terms of the actual content that we have, we do interviews, but we're also interested in writing, we're interested in poetry, and other forms of expression that Somali youth want to share with us. Um, particularly, we're interested in um, the ages between 18 and 25. And these interviews run from 30 minutes to three hours. Uh, it depends on who we're interviewing and how comfortable they are with us. Um, but we also have a reading group that we attend every other week with Professor Kabachi. And um, we discuss different themes like identity, migration, and the refugee experience as they are, um, as they relate to the interviews that um, we did. Uh, the most recent one, we read memoirs uh, about different types of people. I read one on uh, a Latino person's experience migrating to the U.S. Some other people read on um, uh, the experience of a South African woman and her life in um, pre and post apartheid South Africa. Um, and also, in addition to that, uh, some of us enrolled in a digital storytelling course, which is um, Professor Walt Jacobs, he's the chair of the African American and African Studies, along with the Gender, Women, and Sexuality Studies program, created this course in order for the students to create digital stories of their lives. And if there's time, I will share one that I did um, for a recent assignment. But this course is interested in the intersectionality you know, of race, class, and gender and as it relates to the students' personal experience. Um, the different themes that we discuss and sexual, excuse me. We discuss things like uh, the gender, gender experiences, difficulties, um, life in family and Islam, but we're interested in, as you can see, like here and there. So we're trying to understand how these different themes both interrelate with each other, but in addition also how they're different. So how did somebody experience, um, for example, education in Nairobi or as Saida was saying, the Kakuma refugee camp versus somebody who left Kakuma and went to Edina High School. You know, there's a big shift that happens there. Um, and now, um, my friend Hamid will share the Checo website and kind of what we're doing to create this website. Hi, good morning. My name is Mohammed Jiria. Um, I'm a junior at the University of Minnesota, as John just told you. And I first started, I first joined up with the Sheko team um, about January, you know, early, early in the semester. Um, because Mustafa introduced me to, to Sheko and the Sheko team in the fall after I think I was the second person they interviewed. Um, and they asked me, you know, because we're friends, you know, from being previous, uh, doing previous work together. So they asked me to, to come in and um, help out in the site, what the, in the website. So what the website is in general is to archive these narratives that we collect. Not only the, the narratives that we collect, but also um, poems and poetry and collages.